What does the logo have to do with React? So on every update, which we get from that, state, uh, that set state call. React is not reactive. There is an internal joke in the team that React should have been called The role of naming is believed to be significant in the origin of language. It is thought that early humans developed the assignment of a particular sound to represent a particular object as a way to label them and communicate about them with others. So the function of the name is that it becomes a reference shared by two or more people. How good is the name becomes more important if more people use it. Historically, the necessity to name something was pretty rare. If you were a scientist perhaps and you just found out a new star. Nowadays, marketers became a profession that has to name a lot of products to sell them. And maybe surprisingly, programmers are probably the most naming heavy profession. So it's only natural that it became an important topic for us. It is a part of heated discussions, PR reviews and even conference talks. I would argue that there are two fundamental characteristics of a good name. It should express meaning. And it should help to differentiate one particular thing from other things. Of course, it's easier said than done. I love this one blog post from Neil Kakar, where he argues that by naming things, we are compressing information into the name. This is almost always a lossy compression. Because English isn't precise, like for example C++, so compressing from a precise to an ambiguous language increases those losses. For programmers, names are about meaning. Because a meaningful name means the ability to easily recall what is behind it. But for marketers, names have to sell. That's the sorrowful origin story of JavaScript, which was named after Java because it was popular and the authors hoped to onboard Java programmers on the hype train. There is also something aesthetically pleasing about short names. Social Network Movie famously credited Sean Parker for Drop the the, just Facebook, it's cleaner. Vue.js got its name from the French word for Vue, which the creator says he likes because I throw Vue into Google Translate and found the French translation of it. It's just three letters, it looked cool, it's not taken on NPM. So I was like, okay, this is it. React also has a very short and aesthetic name, but what does it mean? Dan Abramov asks a very surprising question. What does the logo have to do with React? So the project is not called Atom. It's not a physics engine. Um, so one interpretation is that it's kind of a pun on reactions. So atoms participate in chemical reactions, reactions react. It actually correlates with Michael Luhmann's statements. He is the creator of React Logo and he said that Logo represents a simplified atom and the name of the library correlates with chemistry. But Dan proceeds to share a different idea. But as I started playing with React, I actually got a... Um, I found a different interpretation that made more sense to me. We know that physical matter consists of atoms and we've learned that it's uh, the types of these atoms and their properties that determine how the physical matter looks and behaves. And React has taught me something similar, that you can take a user interface and you can split it into these independent units called components. And it's the types uh, and properties of these components that can describe uh, how the user interface looks and behaves. I personally like this interpretation, but it is more about React's logo than about its name. There is actually a very interesting thread in the official React repo on GitHub. We can find Dan reacting to his own remarks from the previous video. He points out to Tom, most probably Tom Okino, who he credits with coming up with the actual name. And there is a link to a blog post on the official React website that quotes Jordan Walk, the author of React. This API, he means the API of React library, reacts to any state or property changes, so I think the name is fitting. This is actually one of the most fundamental concepts behind React. In the words of Pete Hunt, 
So on every update, which we get from that, state, uh, that set state call that I mentioned earlier, we build a new virtual DOM subtree, and we diff it with the old one. We compute the minimal set of DOM mutations, and we like, drop them into a queue, and then we batch execute all of the updates together. Looking at this diagram, we can clearly see what Jordan meant. But let's go back to Dan, because it's getting even more interesting. He says, yeah, I don't think we have anything beyond Jordan considering rendering reactive to changing inputs, even though it's not strictly reactive programming. Okay, the bomb was dropped. Reactive programming is a whole different beast. Some people say React is definitely not reactive. React is not reactive. Or as John Lindquist said, React is a terrible name for React.js. Some people agree. Actually, they only say this is not a typical reactivity. And they also say Svelte is not reactive. We can actually find some reference in React official docs. The team writes, there is an internal joke in the team that React should have been called Schedule because React does not want to be fully reactive. So React is not a perfect name. The team that works on the library knows that. The community knows that. But I would argue this is not because of the reactivity, but because it fails to deliver on the important function of the name. The name should differentiate one particular thing from other things. Reacting to state changes is not a unique innovation introduced by React. Even before, there were frameworks like Angular that were doing exactly the same thing, reacting. We can also find more problems with naming in the React ecosystem itself. In the words of Arthur Clarke, the DOM is just one of the rendering environments React can render to. The other major targets being native iOS and Android views via React Native. This is why Virtual DOM is a bit of a misnomer. So React's name is not one straightforward concept. Over time it became a group of multiple different associations packed inside the logo and the name. It shouldn't be mistaken as a reactive programming reference, by which it's actually kind of repeating the mistake of JavaScript name, as it's referring to some existing concept that's making more confusion than order. And the name doesn't differentiate React from other UI libraries, as reacting to state changes is not that special, but it's a pretty good simplification of what React does. Let's not forget, the library itself is great. It caused the earthquake in web development 10 years ago, and its continuous development and long reign on the front-end proves that it has a lot to offer. So it's only a name, and naming things is hard. Why did you call Svelte Svelte? <laughs> Why do we call Svelte Svelte? Um, it's always really difficult to find a name for a project that isn't already a package on NPM. Hi, Philip here. It took me about 40 hours to create this video, so if you want to let me know that I should keep working, you can do it by hitting like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.